whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Today, my brothers and sisters, we celebrate a martyr of our church, St. Janarius, Januarius, in Italian, San Gennaro. Many of us have heard about the many feasts to this wonderful bishop of the early church, who, with several companions, was decapitated. At first, they were thrown to the lions. And when the lions didn't do the job, people thought it was just magic that they were preserved. So they decapitated them. Very grisly death, if you want to think about it, cutting somebody's head off. We saw that just recently when they took John the Baptist's head, of course, and put it on a platter. But that's the way of the world. The world will hate you, Jesus tells us. And we see in today's world how the world hates Jesus Christ and anything to do with his church. Father John Harden tells us that we are now living in the age of martyrs, more martyrs in the 20th century than the, all the centuries put together before the 20th century. And it hasn't stopped yet. Even in merry old England, I was reading a book recently about was Shakespeare a Roman Catholic? And there's strong evidence by scholars that he was. And a lot of language in his plays are veiled, telling about the, about the Catholic faith and the persecution. His father was a recusant. Those are the English who kept the faith. And because they kept the faith, they were fined. A distant cousin was a priest, St. Robert Southwell, who dedicated a poem to Shakespeare. He was killed, a martyr at Tyburn. In recent history, we see the French Revolution, allegedly a glorious thing for liberty, equality, and fraternity, all nonsense, where the kings and many others, the revolution was finally ended when the Carmelites, several Carmelites, a Carmelite monastery, went to their death. This has been memorialized in a beautiful opera on the Carmelites singing, going to their death. The French Revolution stopped. In this century, we know there was a, a revolution, a martyrdom of the Mexican people extended for two decades, the 20s and the 30s. Pope Benedict XV, Pope Pius XI, wrote three encyclicals condemning the treatment of the government on the Catholic Church, how it was oppressed, the property was taken, priests were condemned, martyred, so on. And we know in the 20th century, also in Europe, how various countries, Germany, Russia, killed many, many Catholics. So it's hard for us to believe that these things could happen in America, but we can see it possibly coming. Sadly, though, many people have already left the church and they're not going to give in to martyrdom because they want this world. If you love this life, you will lose it. So many Catholics... Hopefully they will change when the persecution comes, as it seems to be coming, and they'll come back because the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. And this is what we need to pray for. Because we have become careless, God will let us to be persecuted. When only 10 or 15, 20% of the church is going to mass on Sunday, God will let our oppressors come and persecute us. If we don't have a wet martyrdom with our blood, we'll have a dry martyrdom, keeping the faith. So we should pre prepare for this. And even pray for martyrdom like many of the saints did. 
So we're in very evil times. But the gospel tells us that if we want to see to grow, we want to be reborn to eternal life, we cannot love this life. If we love this life, we will have our fun in this life, not in the next. If you love this life, you will lose the next. If you lose this life, as Jesus tells us, whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. That's why these feast days in honor of the saints are so wonderful. And the feast of St. Gennaro, St. Januarius, is especially wonderful. Because God gives us a, a very special miracle every, every year. At, uh, at Water and Thurston tells us that it happens 18 times a year in the city of Naples. They take a vial of the blood of St. Janarius and they have prayers and so forth and it liquefies, becomes liquid and it turns a crimson, quite often a, a crimson red. This has been going on for the last 400 years. It's a marvelous miracle. And it astounds all who go. And we rejoice at it because God gives us this little token of the supernatural to sustain us, to give us courage, to imitate the saints, especially St. Janarius, who was a holy bishop who was decapitated, and so many other saints. So let us pray for those who are being persecuted in these days. Let us pray for our own country, where many Catholics are standing up for their faith, protesting what our government is doing, denying us the conscience that we have to practice our faith, forcing us to perform abortions or give out to pay for contraception and so on. It's going to get, I think it's going to get worse. Because wherever you have abortion, the devil is around. And if these people can abort babies, they can do anything. And one life or another, your life and my life won't make any difference. So we need to pray, pray for those who, who will be undergoing persecution, pray for those who are lax, that they would become strong and get some fortitude to stand up for Jesus Christ against the Herods of our world and all the other evil men. And pray that the church will grow glorious as it always does in the blood of the martyrs. This is what Our Lady at Fatima said. She promised that we would have peace, but she also promised that the Holy Father would suffer much. And she said the good will be persecuted. We don't hear that too much from Fatima, but it's one of the things that Our Lady said. The good will be persecuted, and they were during the 20th century, especially in Europe. So we need to just sustain ourselves, pray for one another, and pray for our church, and pray for our Holy Father that he becomes strong in, in the fight for the truth and our faith. May the Lord bless you. Oh, oh, oh.